Adore dost. How are you, my friends? How are you? How are you? Um, super bad. Very, very early. Warrior Queen is sleeping. I am up making videos. I, uh, I'm off today. Today is uh, Thursday. I am off. I got some videos to do. I got some work to do. And here we go. So I have, <clears throat> I have this uh, video uh, from the Quint. And I know a lot of you guys don't like the Quint. And, and I kind of, I go through the videos of the Quint and um, if something is, there's been a couple that are really bad that I just, I don't do, right? I just delete them. And, but the reason I do do the Quint is the Quint never gives me any copyright issues. A lot of places do. So I can use the Quint and they don't really care. <laughs> so my apologies for the cue. Um, and, and I'll tell you what, if, it, if, if I ever react to a video that is anti-nationalist or anti-India, I will thrash them on the video. Okay, that's my deal to you. So, here's a video about uh, can anybody own the moon and its natural resources? Uh, short answer is yes. Yes, they can. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and look at this. In 1996, Kumar Sanu proclaimed, Mera chand mujhe aaya hai nazar. In 2019, India asked, Kya us chand pe paani aur oxygen bhi nazar aa rahe hai? So, when Chandrayaan-2 mission finally touches down on the moon's surface, the question is, can anyone own the moon? Basically, can India plant a flag on the moon's south pole and claim, ke bhai, ab ye to hamara hai. After all, till recently, planting a national flag on a piece of land did amount to claiming ownership over it. Can, say, an Amrapali build a house there and say that it is their land? Pehle ye dharti pe to house bana le, fir chand ki sochenge. The short answer is no. Neither India nor you're anyone it, else can crazy. divide the moon up among themselves. The long answer though lies in the United Nations' Outer Space Treaty of 1967. This treaty, signed by the US, the UK, the Soviet Union and India at the height of the Cold War, specifically stated that the moon is not subject to national appropriation by use, occupation or by any other means. This is why 50 years ago, when Neil Armstrong planted the American flag on the moon, it did not mean that the moon belonged to America. Even Armstrong's famous words, a small step for man, a giant leap for mankind, makes it clear that it was a big deal for all of humankind and not just the United States. The treaty said that the moon shall be free for exploration and use by all states, but shall be carried out for the benefit and in the interests of all countries. In simple words, the moon belongs to everyone and yet to no one. Back in 1967, the big space powers signed this treaty because exploiting the moon's natural resources wasn't really on the horizon. Should but, be. hang on a moment. There is suddenly renewed interest in the moon and we see NASA, Amazon's Jeff Bezos, Tesla's Elon Musk, China, Russia, all have their eyes on our celestial neighbours. Why? The same reason as Chandrayaan 2. The government has spent Rs 978 crore on this mission to find out if there are traces of water, oxygen and the isotope helium-3 which is vital for clean fuel on Earth. The next step after this exploration will be potentially mining these resources. Colonizing the moon is not the biggest question then. What the world must answer is, can someone own the moon's natural resources for profit? Surely, Amazon isn't directing our online shopping money into space exploration away. This brings us to the United Nations' Moon Treaty of 1979, which proposed that Who the cares? moon and its natural resources are the common heritage of mankind. Common heritage of mankind? Um, no thanks, said the US and the Soviets, we'll pass. Neither space power ratified the Moon Treaty of 1979, as natural resources on the moon have since become much more attractive. So, where do we stand in 2019? What's the up, world is split resources? into two schools of thought on this. Mm -hmm. Countries like the US and some in Europe believe in the finders keepers policy. In fact, in 2015, the United States passed the Commercial Space Launch Competitiveness Act, which basically recognizes the right of its citizens to own and legally sell resources they manage to mine from asteroids. It's similar to the laws of the high seas, 
the second school of thought where others like Russia and Brazil feel that the moon's resources belong to humanity as a whole. And finally, as far as Indians are concerned, if we had to migrate to a place with giant craters, poisonous dust, no guarantee of clean water and temperatures that go up to 150 degrees during the day, it may just feel like home. <laughs> That was a good one, dude. That was very, very good. I enjoyed that. You get a golf clap for that one, bro. You made me laugh. Very good. I'll catch you guys later. Peace and much love.